What should we talk about? The departure of Lopetegui, of course. Simeone, hot and cold, beat Sevilla, but then lost in the Champions League. We'll talk about that. Barcelona, I was in Milan, and I saw something in Barcelona that I'll share with you. Plus, Messi, it's been published that apparently he's definitely coming to Barcelona. Is he? Well, taking advantage that uh, the biography I've written uh, on him, the authorized biography, the only one that's out there, it's in the shops right now. We'll talk about that, of course, and about the rest of the games, La Liga games that are in Premier Sports this weekend. Let's do that, but first, a coffee. <laughs> Yes, we will discuss Messi and his future, but first, let's say goodbye to uh, Julio Lopetegui. It was a very strange sending off, one that corresponds more to English football than to Spanish football. In Spanish football, you get the sack and then you go. In the Premier League, I think there's more respect for the manager, and I think that's what Monchi was trying to do, the director of football of Sevilla, when he kept him for the game against Borussia Dortmund, a bad defeat, for one at home. And it confirms what we've seen statistically this season. Uh, they are one point away from relegation, 10 points away from top four, the, the equal worst performance at, at home. Really a, a lot of bad things that have been happening that suggest the cycle may have finished or should have finished in the summer. Is Yule Lopetegui the only one to blame? Absolutely not. I think Monchi will accept that as well. Uh, basically, this is a team that lost... Um, Kunde and Diego Carlos, the, the, the two centre-backs, the foundation, the defensive foundation of the team, Fernando as well, getting on and has been ill in the last few months, so that collapses. And when that collapses, they just don't have enough goal to, to win games with uh, with Rafa Mir, with uh, Nesiri, just not the type of strikers, even Dolberg, who's just arrived, that will give you 20, 25 goals per season. So, all in all, this is uh, a team that, yes, I think, Lopetegui will also admit it needs something. It's how he got there that is really frustrating for the manager because he did see it coming. He warned the club, but not enough action was taken. Uh, they will play Athletic, uh, Athletic Club, and that's a team that's in a completely different dynamic. Athletic Club that uh, decided to say at the beginning of the season, publicly, in a press conference, we're going for Europe. And normally teams don't do that kind of thing. They're actually meeting the targets. They are the third best goal scorers in La Liga already. Uh, only Barcelona Madrid have scored more goals. The third best defense, so really balanced. And in um, Sanfet, playing in the center midfield, instead of just being a number 10, he's originally a number 10. He's got so much quality and he's shown it. Sanfet and Nico Williams are the two bright spots of the team. Nico Williams who's impressed with the national side, definitely going to the World Cup because Luis Enrique doesn't have that kind of player that dribbles and goes all the time. Really brave player. Those two have been uh, helping Athletic Club reaching completely another, another level. Barcelona play Celta at home and what I've seen having been in, in Milan is a team that when he has to reach the next level, that is beat the, the, the big teams, I don't think he's ready yet. They have quality throughout the team. We know that. Uh, they have had problems with, with injury. And now Cassier has, has been joined the list of, of injured players. That includes Memphis Depay and, and De Jong, Bellerin, Koundé, uh, Araujo, of course. These are big names, but they have a big squad. The problem has been that uh, Xavi, in the work that he's doing with the side, he's in at level one of the positional game that, that he wants meaning that uh, he, he needs more work, more trainings to get level two, level three, and beat defences as tight as, for instance, Inter Milan, where they just didn't connect with, this, with the midfielders. With Gavi and Pedri uh, really annihilated, you couldn't find them. Then the forwards couldn't find either, so Lewandowski hardly touched the ball. So Barcelona, when that happens, because they don't have level two, level three, because they don't have all the collective solutions at the moment, basically they, they put a lot of crosses in, uh, they lost a lot of uh, patience and possession, and then Inter Milan had the possibility of beat them. Was it a fair result? Absolutely not, because there were uh, uh, referee mistakes that could have meant a completely different result. But the conclusion is, in La Liga, Barcelona know how to beat teams, they just go, consistently go, but they're going to find more and more teams that will face them like uh, Inter Milan do, defending very deep and see if you can do something, because at the moment they don't seem to have uh, solutions. But Celta Vigo is a different kind of side, it's a team that uh, will attack, uh, will build from the back, uh, they will be exposed, 
they lost three games this season and one they do uh, they lose badly they considered 11 goals in those three uh, three defeats they've got 10 points which is three points more than last season so they are where they're supposed to be mid-table and it will be an entertaining game one more of uh, this weekend and we're going to still deal with two more games uh, but before that let me show you all the games that are taking place in la liga this weekend and you'll watch them all in premier sports and messi messi has not decided anything about his future nothing at all it will be decided after the world cup that doesn't mean the decision will take place in january that means that at some point he's gonna say if he continues with the national side and after the world cup he will could be june he will tell uh, PSG if he's staying or not, and then if he goes to the MLS or comes, comes back to Barcelona. No offer has arrived to Messi from Barcelona. Zero. It's all talk. So there's absolutely nothing. The impression I've got is that right now, uh, the ones who, who can take advantage of the situation is PSG. They've got a two-year deal that finishes this season, but they've got an extra year that if both parts agree, automatically goes in. But if both parts agree, that normally doesn't happen because of uh, PSG knowing now the uh, marketing power of, of Messi and the form as well of, of the player who scored in the Champions League again, uh, means that the, the conditions will be changed and everything, everything will have to be negotiated. And PSG want to offer one plus one. So one more year plus one. And none of that has taken place either because that's been prepared. So Messi doesn't want to hear anything about his future, wants to see how he feels himself. And to be honest, now PSG is working very well. It looks today that uh, PSG have got certain advantage to keep the player. Nothing decided about his future. Certainly, he has not decided to return to Barcelona at this point. Atletico Madrid Girona is another game I'll keep an eye on. First of all, because it seems like the Griezmann case is about to be finished, but not yet. It looks like Atletico Madrid will pay 20 million euros for Griezmann and he will be, at all effects, uh, an Atletico Madrid player. He will reduce his wages about 30%. That's a story that came out in Cadena Ser. And I'm hearing from Atletico Madrid that that's close to be finalized, but not yet. So he probably won't start his game. In any case, it comes on the back of a victory, a good victory against a Sevilla, poor Sevilla that's was dismantled as they had been all season in different games against Manchester City, against Barcelona. Atletico Madrid did the same against Sevilla and then Atletico Madrid lost against Bruges. So it's, it's a very um, irregular season for Simeone. I think what's happening here is that there is still a frustration from from players that they cannot express themselves as, as well as they, they should. Meanwhile, defensively, the team is not as strong as it should have been, even though Savic and Jimenez are back. They still make mistakes. It's easy to attack them, and this is not the Atletico Madrid that Simeone wants to build, one based on not conceding. So how you change that? Just try to convince the players, forget about you know, we know you're very good. We know you can do a lot with the ball. It's what you do without it that makes the difference for Atletico Madrid. Simeone has to insist on that. But it's getting harder and harder for players to listen. And when that happens, you change the players or you change the manager. The manager is not going to be changed. So it looks like they, could, they may have to rebuild the side again, even though it's a young side with a lot of talent. The frustration is, Diego Simeone, why don't you make them play a little bit better? On Girona, to tell you one thing, I introduce you every week a new player of quality, Tati Castellanos, on loan from uh, New York City of the MLS, really from the City group. Tati Castellanos has scored two goals, play every game, and he's a striker that is going to places. I met him, I did a, an interview with him, it's in, in Spanish, I think, subtitled in English in my uh, YouTube channel. Tati, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Todo bien, perfecto, perfecto. Te llamo Tati porque me has dado permiso, ¿eh? Pero yo normalmente a la gente le llamo por su apellido o, o por su nombre, pero lo de Tati... Estamos, estamos, estamos en confianza, dale. And he has a, a strong personality and he's very ambitious, so it's a step towards something else. Tati Castellanos is, hopes to impress in games like this against, uh, against Atlético Madrid. Another top game on Sunday, that's Real Sociedad. Villarreal. Omar Sadik, the striker that Real Sociedad signed, is, is injured. He's going to be out for a long time. But others are coming on with the goal. Sorloth is becoming the striker that uh, Real Sociedad wanted him to be. He scored twice at the weekend against uh, Girona. And 
Bryce Mendet has got four goals in seven games already. Has arrived from Celta, of course, a midfielder. Has got so much quality and again he's jumped to the next level. So things are sorted for Real Sociedad while Sadiq gets uh, recovers. And Oyarzabal, their captain and perhaps main star, uh, is back in training. So in two, three weeks' time you may start seeing him and that's good news for them. But bad news for Gerard Moreno at Villarreal. He's out for another month. He may miss the, uh, the World Cup. And his, uh, the stats of Villarreal drop massively offensively without him. They haven't won without him this season, for instance. And he's absolutely key, but they need to find other solutions. Nicholas Jackson is the striker that's been used more often by Unai Emery. 21-year-old, who I think will be a very good player, but only one goal in, eight, in seven games, which means that uh, he's got to improve on that department. But he moves really cleverly. He's strong. Uh, he could finish better. That's the thing. But... This Real Sociedad Villarreal is a game for the Champions League. These two teams will be fighting for the Champions League. And I cannot wait for it as I cannot wait for the rest of the games. Let me show you again what's, uh, what's up this weekend. We've got, for instance, games on Saturday that you shouldn't miss. We already mentioned Atletico Madrid and Girona. Sevilla Athletic Club as well. But the last game on Saturday is Getafe Real Madrid. And on Sunday, you've got a very good game to start with. Valladolid Betis. Betis looking Really good one day attack. Cádiz Español, Real Sociedad Villarreal, and Barcelona Celta Vigo is the last game on Sunday. There's one more on Monday, which is Elche Mallorca. That's it for now. More coffee with Guillem next week at this time. Mm -hmm.